What did you think was happening? Mary Oliver, in her poem Gratitude, imagines a moment at the end of our lives when we get to do a debrief of it all. We look back on the ride as we get off it. What was wonderful? What was astonishing? What, we're asked, what did you think was happening? It's hard to engage with a question like that when you're actually on the ride, just trying not to fly off. But I hope in the next hour we can slow the ride enough to pay attention and to move that question into the present tense. What do you think is happening right now in the midst of the chaos? What tiny miracles are unfolding right in front of you? Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. I'm Bruce Grierson and I'm at your service this morning. I'm so grateful you've chosen to join us here at North Shore Unitarian Church where we take it as our mission to inspire one another to live with depth, meaning, and purpose. 
In this community, we celebrate people from all walks of life, no matter who you are or who you love or what lens you see the world through or whatever the word grace means to you on a day like this, we hope you will feel welcome here. I'm not sure thank you is an appropriate response for a gift someone didn't know they were giving, but the fact is we live here, we get to live here on the traditional unceded lands of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam First People. It's a blessing that comes with responsibilities that we do not take lightly. Now, my wing person here today is Lila. How are you feeling? I feel really good. Atta girl. To signal the onset of our shared sacred time together, I'm going to ask you, Lila, to, to light three candles, starting with our chalice, one of the oldest rituals in this faith. We kindle this flame as a symbol of our gathering. And now, Lila, I'm going to ask you to light two more candles. They're both candles of concern. We're going to get to the joys later in this service. One represents anything that might be lying heavy on your hearts this morning. Whatever your burden today, know that it isn't yours to bear all by yourself. It's spread across this caring community. And the final candle is a candle of global concerns. From the escalating climate emergency to Russia's recent nuclear saber rattling, there's no shortage of things to be terrified about. But we UUs believe that there is power in standing together in these moments. standing together in these moments, and sometimes there's power in getting down in the dirt together. To that end, I'd like to ask Jean Prescott to come and help us with that. Good morning. Good morning. A prayer for thanksgiving. Let us give thanks for generous friends with hearts as big as Hubbard's and smiles as bright as their blossoms for feisty friends as tart as apples, for continuous friends who, like scallions and cucumbers, keep reminding us we had them, for crotchety friends as sour as rhubarb and as indestructible, for handsome friends who are as gorgeous as eggplants and as elegant as a row of corn, and the others 
as plain as potatoes and so good for you. For funny friends who are as silly as Brussels sprouts and as amazing as Jerusalem artichokes, and serious friends as complex as cauliflowers and as intricate as onions, for friends as unpretentious as cabbages, as subtle as summer squash, as persistent as parsley, as delightful as dill, as endless as zucchini, and who, like parsnips, can be counted on to see you through the long winter. For our old friends nodding like sunflowers in the evening time, and young friends coming on as fast as radishes. For loving friends who wind around us like tendrils and hold us despite our blights, wilts, and witherings. And finally, for those friends now gone, like gardens past that have been harvested, but who fed us in their times that we might have life thereafter. For all these we give thanks. Amen. Max Coots. Put my little storytelling hat on. <laughs> all righty. I'll pop that up there. Thank you. Oh, do I need that? No, nope, I don't. All righty. Once upon a time, a traveler became lost in the wilderness. He ran out of food and much more serious, because this was in the middle of summer and it was scorching hot, he, he ran out of water. The last drop disappeared from his flask two days ago. So now this guy, you know, he's beyond thirsty. His throat is closing up, he's starting to get delirious, and he knows that, you know, if I don't find water real soon, I'm done. And then he sees, through a gap in the trees, what looks like a hut. And he's going, is this my mind messing with me, or is this is this something I can use? And he keeps walking toward it, and as he gets closer, he's thinking, maybe, maybe. And he gets right up on it, and he lays a hand on it. Solid. That is a hut. Yeah, man. And he pushes on the door with all the strength that he has left, and it opens. There's nobody inside. Looks like it's been abandoned for years. It has that sort of musty, mousy, you know, smell in it. And he kind of sniffs the air for any hint of any, anything organic, anything, any hint of life in there, and there's nothing, you know. This is a, he determines, this is, this is a dead hut. And then he sees something in the back, in the dimness, and he, he kind of can't believe it. It looks like a pump. It's a pump, a red pump with a red handle, and there's a pipe that's going through the floor obviously to some sort of underground spring. And now the guy lets out a whoop of joy, and he sort of, Paul Bunyan strides over to that pump, and he starts to crank on the handle, but no water comes out. It's just... <laughs> this, you know, there's not even any resistance. You can tell when a pump is, has promise, when it resists you, and this was just nothing. And, as excited, as, as thrilled as he was, you know, 10 seconds earlier, now that's as far as he's plunged in despair. And he thinks, maybe this really is finally where the story ends for me. And then he sees something else. Up on a shelf is a bottle of clear liquid, which sure looks like water, with a cork in it to stop evaporation. And he s grabs it off of the shelf, and whatever it is, it looks like water, whatever it is, it's, it's wet and I'm going to drink it. And he pries the cork out and he's got it in both hands, sweet nectar of life, and he's about to drink it down and, and he sees that there's a note attached to it. And the note says, use this, <laughs> use this water to prime the pump. And he's going, seriously, <laughs> the one thing in the world I can count on at this moment, the one thing I, I, that is a sure thing is this drink in my hand, and you're asking me, whoever you are, to pour it into a hole in the ground. On the other hand, and this, the one part of him that's, that's not sort of screaming lizard brain at this point, the one part that's still reasoning knows 
that getting that pump going is the only real solution for him, because if he drinks this, maybe he lives another day or two, but he's got to get that pump going. I mean, he, he needs more than a drink. He needs a source of water. So he stands there, looking at this thing, almost sort of a lover's gaze, and he's shaking. And ice ages come and go as he stands there, deliberating what to do with this glass of water. And finally, he tips it into the slot in the top of the pump, and at the same time, he starts to crank on the handle. And this time, it feels different. This time there's resistance. And from deep in the guts of the thing, he hears a sort of gurgling sound. And out of the spigot comes a very small trickle of water. And this is very exciting. And it's rusty and it's red, and but as he keeps pumping, it starts to come more and more, and it starts to run clear. And now it's gushing out of that spigot. And he puts his head underneath, blah, 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 blah. and he drinks, blah, 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 and he lets it run over his face. <laughs> Now he's guffing and hacking, <coughs> and he's laughing because he knows that he's going to live. And he takes his flask and he fills it up right to the top for the journey ahead. He's still, he's still lost, but now, you know, now he's got the strength to kind of think clearly, and he can MacGyver his way out of this situation. He's pretty sure. And he's feeling so much better. And he picks up his pack and he's about to leave the hut, and he remembers the priming bottle. I'm going to fill that up again for the next poor schlub who's in, my, who's in my position. And he takes it, and he fills it, and he stoppers it up. And then he can't resist at the last minute adding his own two cents to that note. And there's a little golf pencil there. I guess who, whoever made the note for him, he's going to add something to it. And he writes down on the bottom of the note, believe me, it works. <laughs> now, I'm going to ruin this story by explaining it. Well, not, not explaining it, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to apply it. And I think you know where I'm going. This is, this is the story of us. And that cabin in the woods is this. You know, we stumbled in here in pretty bad shape, some of us years ago, some of us decades ago. And what we found in here changed us. I want to say, in a few cases, it saved our lives, because that's what, um, that's what it feels like. And that little grace note in the story about adding the little bit at the end, how many of us, when we see somebody new <laughs> come to the door of this place, and they're sort of standing in the doorway, they've never, they don't quite know whether to take that next step, and they're thinking, maybe, I don't know about this place, it's, maybe there's, there's a baseball game on, I think. We want to grab them by the lapels and say, you found us, come in, welcome. Welcome, there is something here for you. Trust us on that. Trust this last chance saloon in the middle of nowhere. Trust that even though you can't see it, there's a reservoir under the floor. And the pump works because people have been priming it for 55 years. You know, it's not a, it's not a bottle of water you're going to find here, my, my thirsty traveler friend. It's a purple layer of It's coffee. <laughs> and it's the source of water.
each made holy, love right through. So today we're talking about Thanksgiving, about gratitude, and it's a fascinating subject to dig into. It's funny that even though gratitude is a pillar of almost every ancient religion, and there's lots of evidence that gratitude just works in a practical sense, that is, people who live with gratitude and wonder just have better lives, gratitude isn't something that comes naturally to us. It isn't, and that's because it isn't essential to our survival. Fear is, anxiety is, these are emergency emotions, but gratitude isn't an emergency emotion, so it's not wired into our skulls the same way. It's a skill we have to develop. It's a muscle we have to train up. Especially these days, when the emergency emotions are getting all the action, and especially as we get older, actually, we have to actively remind ourselves of what we're grateful for. We have to remind ourselves of the things in our lives that are providing us with a steady little income stream of joy, but that maybe we've been taking for granted. So we're going to try a little exercise now. I'll explain the concept, and then we'll dive in together here. This is the work, by the way, of a psychologist named Fred Bryant out of Loyola University in Chicago. His, his area is gratitude and its trickle-down benefits for you and then spilling into the wider community. So first, I'm going to ask you to think of something, one thing, that you're grateful for. And then when you pick that thing, I'm going to ask you to try to recover its origin story in your life. So this is actually what gratitude, what being grateful for something is, right? It starts with you pinpointing the moment that that gift fell into your lap, into your life, the exact time and place. Because unless you tag it like that, there can actually be no gratitude. So if you've ever watched a little kid, you know the difference here. Grandma gives the kid a cookie, and the parent says, what do you say? And the kid goes, yum! <laughs> and, the, and the parent goes, no, what you say is, thank you, Grandma. So it doesn't register to the kid that something just happened that they're supposed to be grateful for. It is just sweet life rolling along. <laughs> Cookies happen. And that's a lovely state to aspire to, but it's fleeting, right? What you want is to be able to hold that cookie in your memory and savor it even after it's gone. That's gratitude. Okay, so is everybody up for giving this a try? Okay, let's do it together. Choose something you're grateful for. It could be a person, a pet, a job opportunity, a faith community, an event, some stroke of luck that changed everything everything for you. Pick one thing. Everyone got it? Okay. Now, think back to the moment that this first came into your life, the exact instant. Everybody there? Okay. Now that you've pinned that moment in your memory, that little scene from the movie, I want you to try to remember the emotions you felt then on your first exposure to this gift, this person or animal or event. You're still in that scene in the movie. Try to feel it. Feel what's happening. And now, I want you to think about how, over time, your appreciation for this gift has changed. How your feelings for it and about it, and about it have ripened and sweetened, grown deeper. Savor the change. Savor the really granular appreciation you now have for this person, or animal, or faith community, or event, right now. The gift of them. Try to imagine how impoverished your life would be without them, if they had never happened to you. Maybe they're still in your life. If they aren't, savor the memory of them. Either way, you still have them, because you have the memory of them. Hold them close. Stay with this. Go as deep as you can. Thank you. 
starting today goes to one of our favorite charities, Seeds of Change, which supports local farmers and tackles food insecurity within communities. Please give as generously as you are able. Would the ushers please come forward?
a number of announcements we have this morning. Yes, we have um, some marvelous things coming up. One is the talent show, which will be on Saturday, October 21st at 4.30 p.m. So the talent show will happen first. It's light, so you can all get here. And the appropriate response is, yes, Alison, we'll be there. So tell me again, when is it? October at, yes. And we have an amazing lineup of performers, including our youth here, who are absolutely amazing. And just, it's gonna be wonderful. Um, so th I think that's everything. We also have a guitar group that's going to be starting up, and Paul will do a quick announcement about that. Thank I'm you, Paul. Um, we need to be right. the mic for people who can't. Okay. I was practicing this. On that note, um, as you know, there's a lot of musical activities going on here, and this is just one more of those. But, you know, when I look around and I see people in this congregation, there are people of a certain age, I mean, by and large, you know, my generation, sort of. And I think about the phases of my life and the musical things that have accompanied those phases. You know, what happened during adolescence and young adulthood and divorce and all the rest of it, you know, and problems along the way. What songs was I listening to? And those songs are the things that come out, you know, at those times when I'm, I'm brooding about these issues. But anyways, I, this generation has grown up with guitar songs. So we'd like to have a group that meets once a week um, and to do 50% playing, perhaps 50% talking and just uh, discussing music from our generation. You know, we can play recordings, we can uh, try new things, we can jam, you know, but we're not going to sing Kumbaya and Blown in the Wind necessarily. We're going to sing better stuff than that. So um, <laughs> please come on down and check it out. I'm planning at this point on one hour, Wednesday afternoons, say six to seven or possibly Thursday, six to seven. But Thursday interferes with the choir to some extent, but um, we'll see if we can work around that. Keep your eyes on the e-bulletin, and if you like to sing or play an instrument and you want some accompaniment, I can accompany on guitar, or we probably will have a pianist as well. And so the talent show is a good place to, uh, to uh, show your chops. So anyways, keep your eyes on the bulletin, and I'll see you Wednesday or Thursday of a week from this week, this uh, coming Wednesday. Wow, Paul. <laughs> I can't play the guitar to save my life, but I want a piece of that. Uh, the Harvest Project. If you've brought any last-minute donations for a Thanksgiving hamper, you've seen that we have a big box out in the foyer there. Uh, please leave it there in the bin. If you have a granola bar in your purse or your bag or your pocket, leave it there on the way out. Uh, the hamper will be distributed this week. Also, the Heart, Mind, Spirit team is reforming. A lot of teams are reforming around here these days. The purpose of the HMS team is to provide spiritual growth opportunities for adults with programs that deepen our heart connections and inspire actions in the service of life. If you're interested in being on the team or even chairing it, <laughs> says Marga, please contact Marga Anna or another member of the board. And finally, if you just a reminder, if you have a joy or concern you'd like shared from the pulpit in this space at this time. There are two ways to submit it. You can email it to Janny at the church office or you can write it in the book. It used to be an, I, an iPad out there, now it's a physical book. And um, you, you know, write it in there and uh, we, will, we will speak it. And under the category of joy, um, Yasha Ramsey and Gord Ladder celebrate 43 years together today. <laughs>
background elves who helped make this service possible. Yasha for some of the aesthetics here. Yanni, Yanni for help with um, Jenny for help with some of my reflection, and all the other service associates for keeping this lay-led experiment chugging forward into a future that we're kind of making up together. And now, as we bring this to a close, I'll ask Lila to do the honors once again as we extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this flame. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> we extinguish this flame. Rule of our gathering. Carry with us the light of vision and the warmth of hope. The world calls us to live with depth, meaning, and purpose. We go forth with courage and love. So I'm going to ask you again, what did you think was happening? What did you think was happening in the, today in the, in the better part of a, an hour that we just, spelt, that we just uh, spent together in this cabin in the woods? I hope that whatever your answer to that is, that it's a feeling that you can carry with you and build on through the rest of this Thanksgiving weekend and going forward. It was really my honor to be your service associate today. Thank you so much for coming.